You're listening to the Mouthcast, and uh, my guest on this edition is frontman of a Sheffield band. I've just had the pleasure of witnessing sound check for an early date of their first ever UK tour. And if the sound they checked was anything to go by, audiences over the next uh, fortnight or so are going to find themselves enthralled, or at the very least, rushing the merch table for a copy of brand new EP in the Half Light. From the tremulous High Hazels, Mr. James Leesley. Welcome, Hiya. sir. Yeah, cheers for having me. Begin by uh, talking about the fact that this is your first tour. The band have been together for a while, so yeah. why the wait? Uh, basically, we when we first started, we one of us prince we'd played around in in bands before and done a few gigs and stuff. And then when, when we got together and thought we'll, we'll have a proper crack at this, we thought as main principle was until we get a set of songs that we're really really happy with, we're not going to gig or really do anything because we we built upon the belief that we, we could play a million gigs and after that we'd still have the same average songs, if, if you know what I mean. And You could play three or four gigs and be class and the songs be good. Not saying we are, but the, the songs being good and, and the, you sort of you shoot up a lot quicker than that. So that was main, like, benchmark. So then so we raced for about a year, solidly in practice, which were quite, had to be quite disciplined because it's easy to get to think, oh, we want to play a gig or want to mm. show these songs to somebody. So uh, basically, we just locked ourselves away. We managed to like craft a bit of a sound that we're all really enjoying. We did a little demo, mainly to listen back and think, "Oh, we want right lines here." So, and then Ants, the drummer, he sent it to Steve Lamack at Six Music, just pure, like traditionally, quite old school. Just sent it in a like a letter. He didn't even tell me like until later on, and uh, just a little note and stuff. And it must, they almost get like inundated with yeah. millions and. And then it, it popped up, and then uh, they said that he played it on his proper show, like, and it was only like a demo version and stuff. So uh, that that was the first real like pound back. It was like, oh, we're actually, it was quite relieving because we thought we've gone this far down a year, no like, outside pointers. So it was quite like it was quite a checkpoint for us. That was before we'd even played a gig. So. Mm. We did things a bit backwards, like people in Sheffield did like, we're on there, we're a Sheffield band, but no one's ever seen or heard us. And it's just gone on from there, and then we've, we've played a couple of early shows just to find his feet. Because we've played in previous bands, but once you've stopped and you're in a different dynamic and stuff, it were nerve-wracking, yeah. even though we'd played gigs before, it were a different different kettle of fish altogether, so... So you spent that year really sort of honing the material. Yeah. Did it change much from the early stages to what you felt, you know, you could take out and play live? Uh, yeah, well... Early on, there was before Paul joined. This was before we even started. Hayes was like, we we just milled around as a, th- a three piece, just trying right. to write songs. So they were me, Scott, but we'd not got a bass, which is obviously a, a big, big part of, part of your sound. So we, but that actually exposed us to our melody and guitar lines and everything is so important. So we'd, everything was stripped. And then when Paul joined, there were a couple. There's a couple of songs on the EP that have like stood the test of time and uh, yeah. in, in the band sort of set. He's added bass to them. And that, and it was like the difference when the bass came along to them songs themselves. It was like, God, we've, we've missed this big time. So then yeah. we caught on, and then it just sort of snowballed. And we bass was another instrument, and we try and tr- we try and get the most out of every single instrument, including vocals and stuff. We sit down and make sure everything's like everything, like note by note, everything. It, yeah. Sometimes we get over, you overthink things, yeah. <laughs> we go around in circles, but. The songs do feel very well formed and well crafted as well, if you like. That's that again. That's that's purely because when you're in a guitar band or whatever, you can you can just slam things out and you can sing and you can get a, you can create an atmosphere with with that sort of thing. But when we started writing these, we thought we, we were stripped out with everything. And if the melody's not quite there, it were like the song's not there. Like you can have the best song in the world, it might be a rock song, but if somebody plays it on a piano in a different style, the song is still a quality song. You know yeah. what I mean? So it were it were first coming to terms with that that made us want to go into this, like, melodic sort of... Like your Simon and Garfunkels, they were an early city with acoustics and stuff. We thought, we'll build it up from that mm. and then add our sort of sound, what we've got, well, what we've found, and uh, build it from there. They do sound like the songs could be taken apart and performed in a different way, like you could yeah, maybe... Yeah, that, well, that's... It's sort of um, a good little thing for us, but we're quite lucky because we don't go into a room 
sometimes like it's, there's no real formula but a lot of them are I can sit on a guitar on my own with the songs and make them sound reasonably good if you know what I mean so that that's quite a good thing because obviously acoustic sets are quite nice but yeah and it shows a different side to the song you can, you can hear it band's made up of brothers and schoolmates. Those relationships, those friendships, probably give you a really tight bond, which has got to be a good thing for the band. Yeah. Probably all living similar kind of lives, listening to the same kind of yeah. stuff. So you've got a re- you're all singing from the same hymn yeah, sheet. Yeah, it is. It is really. It's something we don't even think about now. And it's only when I step back and I might have some friend who's trying to get a band together. I think, God, how hard's that? Must if I if I went in this band, I think it'd be really hard for me to get people I know and I'm on the same wavelength and everything and start a band fresh it's one of the most difficult things I think to get the right people involved and luckily like like you say it's um, there's me myself Scott and Anthony have known we, we went to school to primary school so we've, since we were about five or six year old we've knocked about so and then Paul obviously because I were best mates with Anthony I were mixing in his house I'd knew Paul and yeah. uh, so we've known Paul all his lives but he's obviously he's a couple of years older but then when it when it came to the point where we started going out socialising, drinking and things like that, when we were old enough to go out properly, you were you sort of get to that eighteen boundary and then age sort of disappears, doesn't it? Like I go out with people who are forty odd year old sometimes, you know. And it's just like normal. So poor age weren't a concern, but in terms of music, we're so tightly knit because we it's not just the music we don't get together just for the music, it's like the music and then we'll all go out together, we'll all go watch bands together yeah. and it's I mean there's other there's other people coming in and out, but the actual Thing of a band, you just know people. We know all their family. We know each other's families, and you know what winds someone up and what doesn't, and how far somebody can push it, or what they're good at, or what he's better at. So we take it for granted, and I'm, I'm sure a lot of other bands in the same situation would. I, I feel like it'd be so hard if you didn't know, and I think that's why a lot of bands do break up because they've they've been brought up differently a lot of the time. Obviously, it's just it's each to their own band, but for us, I think it's a it's a solid base to go th- to go from. And we've been being honest with each other, like in songwriting. Yeah. If something's not very good, and I didn't really know him, and I didn't, I weren't friends with him, I, I'd probably let that go, and that yeah. probably dilute what we're doing. Whereas yeah. here, we, we are quite frank with each other. You know, and we'll say that's not that good, and then one else, we'll make a laugh about it. But nothing's off the table. But also, you can it's, say it's, what but, needs to be said. Yeah, I mean, Ants and Paul are brothers, obviously, so they have their brotherly connection, like so they they get ratty with each other, but, it's, <laughs> but we have a laugh about it. If you know what I mean? And, yeah. And it's 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 all good fun, but. It is, you can rely on each other as well and we all trust each other and we're honest with each other. It just makes life a lot easier. So we look, we're quite lucky in that respect. The new EP, uh, In the Half Light, title taken from a line in one of the songs. Yeah. I particularly like the song French Rue, and it's no surprise that that's the one that seems to have been picked up a little bit more than the others by uh, radio. Yeah, well, that's that's the original song. That's the one that got us the ball rolling, really, for us. So we've got um, quite a sentimental sort of connection with that. Yeah, that was, that was actually the first song that we, we sort of struck a chord on and thought, this is quite a nice sound to go for, you know, they're mm. quite quite dreamy, like fresh sounding, chimey chords and stuff. And uh, the EP basically, it were, it were like, we wanted it to be a bit of a stepping stone for us just to sort of, to put a bracket around this sort of sound of the band at this early stage. We wanted to try and get it down, you know, onto yeah. properly archive and get it out to people instead of it sort of just getting lost into some old like demo tapes. But do, do you think the sound's likely to change? Then? Uh, well, we've got a lot of songs in this set now, but I don't, they're from the same family of sound if you know what I mean it's, yeah. we are obviously every time we're trying to change we're trying to do something different but I think because what, we, what we're influenced by what we listen to it always like intertwines and cross references each other at some point so I think that sort of it builds from a base so like a lot of these songs obviously it's my vocals as well and the melodies and that are quite 
we, we stick to similar melodies, even if the sound changes, the melody sort of comes from a similar sort of department. But it, the, the new songs that we're doing, they are relatable, hopefully. I'd yeah. like, I like to keep a... So it's like, so it's not like we listen to three different bands at three different yeah. eras. I like, I like it when you listen to a band, and you can actually, you think, oh, I can see where they've gone all the way from there. But then there's still elements of the early stuff in there. Well, Summer Rain, the opening chords for me felt like a bit of a cheeky nod to Heaven Knows a Miserable Now by the Smiths. Right, yeah. Uh, and there is a classic sound going on. It's sort of in the tradition of the Smiths, which I know you've uh, been compared to before. Yeah. Perhaps other bands from that era as well. I was reminded of a band called Bradford. Also a bit of Richard Hawley and maybe even Alex Turner's Submarine soundtrack. A yeah. uh, very sort of strong 50s, 60s thing. Uh, all of which is fine stuff. Where, where does all that sort of stand for you? Uh, yeah, I agree with everything. Like, it's a lot of it is what we've what we've listened to, like as, as a group of friends and stuff. And uh, mentioning Summer Rain and you ever knows it. What I tend to do, and Scott guitarist, and we all do. I think if we hear a song, we'll we'll learn it, and then you you, you sort of like you're learning new chords. I don't particularly know the names of them. Some of them they're that like uh, complex where you put your fingers, but if it sounds good, we'll we'll go with it. And a lot of that. We're, major seventh chords and all these little like jazzy type chords yeah. what Johnny Marr obviously brought into Smith's sound sort of struck a chord with his like music and, and melody wise we could really put some nice melodies over the top of these sort of chords so we, we went with that for quite a while and it's one of the best things we found on a guitar the seventh chord I know it sounds quite basic but it, it sort of like shifted our little thing it just just moves it ever so slightly away it's more like melancholic at times yeah. as opposed to straight out line at you and like Richard Orley, obviously, his guitar playing is what we love guitars to sound like. And yeah. the more I listen to other stuff, the more I can see it. But obviously, what he's inspired by is the stuff even before. So you get to him, and then you think, what's he inspired by? And it's just you, you end up going that way back. So you find out how they played, it and you think, oh, he's took it from that. Or everybody's taking like little bits, but I try and dress it up differently. But a lot of his guitars sound a bit early 80s, like there's Pale Fountains and all yeah. them, and uh, a lot of them sort of bands, like Orange Juice and all that, they, they use them sort of quite jazzy type sounding chords, and uh, it sounded so fresh to us, you know, because we're, I don't know if it's because we're from a couple of decades on, it feels fresh, because we, we, we weren't actually there at the time. Yeah. It feels like <laughs> to us it feels quite new, but then I think, damn, that's what I mean. What I mean. <laughs> well, that indie. Uh, rocker thing, the songwriter, slightly 50s, 60s thing that seems to be going on in Sheffield. Mm. Hawley and uh, Turner looming large at the moment. So, what's in the water in Sheffield? Or, or perhaps what's in the ale? Uh, yeah, yeah, that's more to the point. Um, I don't know, I think it's just... It's a great place to be for music, I think, because yeah. Sheffield in, in itself has got, got so much to offer and, and the people there are really... I know there's some people that aren't, but there's a lot of people, there's a community and there's quite a, a sense of humour that, that runs throughout the town and, well, the city, if you like, it's got a cathedral. And uh, <laughs> and, uh, and I think musically, everybody, seem, there's, a, there's a nice little scene, there's, there's like a few nights that go on, and all the, the 50s and 60s, it's, it's quite cool at the minute, if, if, if I do say so, it's quite, quite a good thing to listen to, but it, again, it's just quite simple. And it just it's a feeling and it's just real good atmosphere and a couple of aunts and that went to watch Nick Waterhouse. He's uh, he produced Alalar's album and all that and he went down London to watch him and that's like your R and you know, like rhythm and blues type yeah. stuff from fifties and that and that that's sort of like making a bit of a comeback. We've we've looked at stuff like that, but personally as as a band we try and just take as much in as we can. You know what I mean? There's no I've got no preference of whether it, if it sounds good to me then I'll I'll look into it. I've got no yeah. stigma attached to any anything really. And fifties and sixties seems to it's just been seems to be loads. It seems to be too much. Gets gets on me like <laughs> on my shoulders. I think God, how am I going to physically? I ain't going to have time to listen to everything. You know what I mean? I think there's going to be so much that I don't hear here. So I just try and take it piece by piece. So. Well, what do you think Sheffield's got that nowhere? Well, other than a park called High Hazels, what do you think uh, Sheffield's got that nowhere else has got? Because it does seem, you know, it's a city that's produced some really defining bands over the last sort of 30 yeah. years, isn't it? Yeah, I think that's that keeps its heritage going, the fact that it has got them, it spurs people on straight away, you know, mm. just as when you're younger. But the city itself, it's bang on edge of Peak District and there's a lot of green space and I like being outdoors and stuff like that and uh, it's got a lot of industrial history and things like that and a lot of working class history where people stick together in its sense of community and like your pulp and people like that, it were all about you coming from a bit working class and, and like striving to get a bit a bit further. 
I don't know. I just think it is good. I love it. I do love it. I mean, we want to travel everywhere, but it is a, a great place. We, there's there's music and there's uh, just just everywhere you can you can walk. There's river and stuff. There's a load of river. You can just walk and even at Middle City where there's factories and that where they've been, you can you can just find somewhere. You think God, you won't think you're here. You know, yeah. like and there's, there's quite a few of them if you ever walk around. I always found when I lived there, so we're going back almost twenty years. I always found it quite a romantic uh, city for that. Yeah, I, th- I think it is. I think it's like when you've got a backdrop of like a, a rundown industrial you know, like steelworks and things yeah. like that. It sends you, it sends my mind back. Anyway, I can imagine workers working like really grafting all day, then going to the pub and then meeting the wife or whatever yeah. and walking. It's got that sort of sentiment to it. It's people, still got that now. Like people work hard and play hard. Yeah, I think that's what I think that's what it is. Hopefully, we're going to skip the work hard bit. We'll put it into music, <laughs> but. Uh, yeah, I think they've done it's paid way for, for like, so the bands that have come through. Yeah. I think like, like Richard Hall has got a lot of heritage in that as he mm-hmm. speaks about and stuff, so I think we're, we're grateful that we're not knee-deep in steel, that may, I think. <laughs> we would have been 50-odd years ago. <laughs> I mean, we're in the north now, so we can talk about uh, labour without fear. Yeah. So, w- what is the division of labour within the group? The songwriting process. You know, would you go away and write a song and bring it to the band, or does it come from? Yeah, as like I said, the fact that we're all really good friends means we're all in on the songs. If you know what I mean, it's not like one. It's not I don't go away write a song and they'll never know what it's about or really connect with it. We, usually, we've all got near enough an equal chunk on an average if you if you took the whole sort of like set of songs but lyrically it's, it's usually myself or Paul the bass player who, who has even an idea or a, a verse or whatever or a full song and because we're honest about it I might have a similar idea in my head with Paul and then we'll try and link them together sometimes yeah. it works sometimes it doesn't and we let if Paul's writing one I'll think right you you finish this because you're you're living this what you what you're thinking and what you're doing so that's just lyric side of it I mean, if score answer or anybody comes up with it, there's no rule. It's just a, mm. it's just something that we tend to... It's just a formula we've found seems to work. Uh, Guitar-wise, obviously, myself and Scott are the guitarists, so we're naturally on the guitars a lot, and whether it be me or Scott, a riff or just a couple of chords, that can spark an idea. And then the melody, which is something we come across and is massive importance to us, that's usually me or Anthony. We usually have a session together, so we're always running around to like each other's houses or whatever and trying to have little mini sessions and build a song up like that. So we'll get lyrics and build a melody up and then we'll take it into practice room. Scott will have some guitar. Some melody might come from a guitar line or vice versa. And we all sit around and have little mini acoustic sessions to work. Just It's just easier to get... Like, if we're working on a bass line, it's easier if I'm on a guitar because you can talk to each other about it and say, yeah. you know, stop, do that one, try that. He'll say, oh, I'll try that, instead of it being a big, loud, banging racket. And then we'll take into practice room, and it might, it might sound shit, but... And then we'll go back to <laughs> drawing board again and try and work it up a different way. And some songs, some songs hang around for months and we, they never get, never, never quite fall into place, and some just fall into... I'm sure everybody, it's what everybody says, but it's, it's true, I think. Some just fall into place like, after a few practices and... We, we try and have an idea, and if it sounds good at the time, and usually if, if all those ears prick up, usually it's something we should work on. Like, yeah. I might play it in background, and if somebody says, What's that you're playing? Like, or oh, anybody. Sometimes you think, This is good, I'll, I'll play this, and no one says that, or you think, <laughs> That can't be that good. <laughs> but, um, but yeah, if you get something that sounds good, but it's not quite going, we'll put it on back burner and, and keep revisiting it. And if something comes at a different time when you're in a different yeah. frame of mind, you can, you can really rack your brains unnecessarily for it. but... There's a, there's a quite, we've got to try and find balance between really giving it its worth time because sometimes songs do take some real work and quite complex and some are, some are more simple but you've got to, know, you've got to try and think ah, we need to move on a bit Well all four songs on the EP and, and the single that came out before actually they all sound effortlessly uh, classy if that's uh, yeah, cheers. the right way to put it well it is the right way to put it because that's <laughs> what they are <laughs> cheers so the EP's just come out, and uh, you're now on the tour with the Crooks. But what else might this year bring for uh, High Hazels? Well, after we've done this tour, we're, we're in to do the album, like the right. f- frameworks and record the album. 
which is something we've been working on. We wanted to do an EP to sort of just get, like I said, that section of his sound out and yeah. then sort of follow that up and keep momentum building. Luckily, we've, the, the label we've released that on High Stuff, they agreed and they wanted to give us the platform to do it, which we, we snapped their hand off, really, because in this day and age, it's so difficult to get anybody to put... I mean, we've got, we haven't got a penny between us, so not to put towards the music anyway, and it's, like, unbelievable that we've got that support, so we've, mm. we're going to take it now because we might never, ever get a chance again. Like, there must be so many bands that don't even get a chance, and good bands, and they just never get a little bit of luck, so that's what our main plan is. The crooks go to Europe, but then they come back and they're doing a Sheffield gig, and we're we're playing that. We'll be coming out at studio. That's at the end of and then, May, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. Th- I think it's thirty fourth, something like that. But yeah, so we're playing that. But that's after this tour. So we've just got this tour. So we're busy with that, and then uh, yeah, there's a couple of weeks I think where we're going to try and get our heads together and finalise the songs for an album, which will probably change when we get in there. But it's all really, really like exciting stuff for us. But we feel like we're taking the right sort of steps, which is quite good. James, thanks very much. Yeah, thanks a lot. Thanks for having me.